is only war. What is up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. We got a battle report for you today. This is our boy Jack in his battle bunker, awesome basement, fucking sick uh, place to play. So we're playing Custodes versus Great Knights. We're practicing for Nova coming up uh, with it, which is a Games Workshop layout. Uh, and they had, they had, they posted their lists or their games that we have to play uh, the schedule. There's three games Friday, three games Saturday, and two games on Sunday. So we're getting eight games in boys with fucking great nights. Uh, probably going to be switching it up after we get this GT going. I'm going to be testing out other armies and focusing on RTTs and some GTs coming up. I do have a wedding uh, coming up in October, so that's kind of what we've been focusing on the past couple months. So after the wedding, uh, we're going to be start focusing on um, really honeymoon, but then we're going to uh, hopefully LVO this year. So if you guys are going to LVO, definitely come up and say hi. Uh, I saw a ton of people last year. It was a fucking great time. But if you guys are new to the channel, appreciate you clicking on the video. If you guys are custodians, we play custodians on the channel. If you guys are great knights, we play great knights, obviously, on the channel. We got ranked number one great knight player in the ninth edition in the world. So that's kind of the competitiveness of the channel. But we're also laid back, if you guys couldn't tell. Drink beers, have fun, play 40K. Uh, go join the Discord if you guys want to post uh, any ideas, tactics, list ideas, all that stuff. And if you guys want to join the Patreon and you like the, the shit that we do on this channel, go ahead over to the Dirtbag Nation uh, Patreon and give us you know some support. Really appreciate it. It. All my grandmasters, competitive dirtbags, just the cars, uh, everybody who supports the channel. Um, thank you guys. Wouldn't be doing this without you. Uh, it's supporting us so much. We're upgrading everything that we possibly can. And we're trying to get in as many games as possible to get you guys better at the game. If you guys want to get better at 10th edition, make sure you guys are competitive or dirtbag uh, grandmasters and make sure you're messaging me. If you're not messaging me, you're not getting the full benefit of being that uh, Patreon because you guys can message me anytime of the day i will get back to you as soon as possible and answer any questions comments uh or list ideas because that's the whole point of the competitive dirtbags so all right let's get into it i took pictures i'm gonna do kind of back to back to back today we got a ton of videos to make on the channel but this video i took pictures because i wanted it this i had a really good review uh from the last time we did this so i wanted to keep this up for loud environments we had about six guys in this basement so it would have been really loud so anytime we have loud environments i'm going to take pictures and kind of do a walkthrough just like i do for my rtt and gt videos i take pictures then i go back and i talk about it uh, and give you tactics ideas what it could done could have done better and what you guys could do to not fuck up like we fuck up so that's the whole point of these videos so let me know in the comments below what you liked what you didn't like what we can improve and then let's get into it so i got some pictures for you guys today right here so uh this one let's let's make myself smaller so you don't have to fucking stare at me the whole time uh this is the layout right here it's the uh games workshop layout we have two big kind of rectangle they're all rectangles or squares that's what games workshop is moving towards uh we have rectangle this one is connected down here so you kind of see like a little square these ones are supposed to be two inches tall uh these ones i believe are four inches tall so two inches so anybody can really just walk over a vehicle stuff like that um but this game we're practicing number three of nova so you actually get to it's dawn of war deployment so it's 10 inches it's actually right here. We took a picture. So it's 10 inches. Uh, it's five objectives, but you get to place the objectives. So first you roll off, and then the winner of the roll off places the first objective. Now here's the thing. You don't know what side you're going to be on. So you could be on either side, because then you roll off again to see what side you're on. So chosen battlefield, you roll off, place an objective in your deployment zone. The other person places an objective in their deployment zone. It could be anywhere in your deployment zone, outside six inches from a table edge, and then it has to be nine inches away from... Uh, another objective so you place the first one then the, the other player places one and then you place one in no man's land but it only has to be nine inches away from that objective so you can literally go right on this line right here uh like let's say i put it right on the shield six inches away from the uh, objectives or from the board edge i can then place it right about here in no man's land nine inches away from that objective so if you guys ever play this mission it's super cool to kind of like put them anywhere you want because uh, then you could start basically almost on two objectives or you can start on two objectives turn one and make them sticky right away so that's kind of what we did again you don't know what side you're on so you want to you don't want to fuck yourself by giving them the best side 
Uh, and then we did a uh, priority target. So priority targets is you get five points max to 10 and then 15 at the end of the game. So on turn five, you're getting f uh, five points up to 10. And then at the end of the game, we both add up five points for each objective that we control. So this one's pretty easy to get close to max primary. Uh, and you don't have to worry about controlling three or stopping your opponent from getting, you know, three because max is 10. So that's what we're practicing. And again, this is the layout. Uh, for, I, I placed that objective with my face, then I placed this objective over here, uh, and then he placed this one for the third one. He, he picked first, or he picked the place first, so he picked there, there, and there, and I did over there and over there. Then he fucking won the roll off, so he chose to go on that side, which he stole my objective and that objective. See, that's what I'm saying, you don't know which side you're gonna be on. So these two objectives are super close, which is great for uh, custodies, and Oh, I apologize. I'm on that side. He's on this side. So I think I won the roll off. This was like three weeks ago. Sorry. So I won the roll off. I chose that side because of how close the objectives are. And then he, he got this side because I put him as far away as possible because I knew I was going against custodies. So I placed this one and then I placed this one all the way over there because of custodies. And then uh, last one was placed over there. So I wanted that side because custodians could literally just sit on those two objectives and be like, all right, these are mine for the rest of the game. So let's go over the lists. All right. <clears throat> Today we're testing out some crazy ass list that we uh, came up with on Discord. We got Drago. Uh, forgot my Drago model at home, but that is Drago. We have uh, one Terminator squad with the Apothecary banner and si we're going to use a silencer, not a silencer, a flamer. <clears throat> Three units of 10 interceptors. Each of them have two side cannons in each squad. And then we have two strike squads, both with a side cannon in each squad. And then we have three rhinos, uh, just kind of being some transports for the interceptors. Uh, and then we have one exaction squad and one Kalidus assassin uh, as well. So that is our 2,000 point Grey Knight list. All right, Jack, what do we got today? All right, we're playing Custodes. I have sh uh, Shield Captain in the Lurus Terminator armor with Ceaseless Hunter. I have Trage on. I also have a Blade Champion. <clears throat> with Veiled Blade, squad of six Custodial Guard with Vexilla, I'm sorry, Wardens with a Vexilla, a squad of nine Ve um, Custodial Guard with a Vexilla, an Exaction Squad, Witch Seekers, and a squad of Voidsmen, two squads of Allure's Terminators, and a Grab Tank with the nice big Boom Booms. <laughs> and a Assassin? And an Assassin, because why not? Because she's amazing. All right, so those are the lists. Uh, deployment, he's on that side, like I said. He's got the, the tank, 10-man uh, unit, a uh, bunch of sisters in the center, uh, exaction squad, assassin, and the other uh, brick over there. A couple guys are in, in reserves and deep strike. Uh, so that's his, his deployment. And then my deployment, we have the two, three, th three rhinos. <laughs> uh, interceptor squads in the rhinos, and then we have two strike squads, which have the scout move. Uh, I put the one objective up here so that way if I scout move, I can get onto the objective and make it sticky turn one. If I don't have turn one, I could just scout move into the ruin and not be shot at. So I'm not sure if you can scout move into a rhino. Somebody let me know. Uh, that would be pretty cool. But we end up uh, going first. I think he ended up going first. So he, he, he got deploy. Uh, teleport homers and behind enemy lines so kind of hard to get behind enemy lines on turn one but he did the uh, sisters ran up all the way to the center so they uh, scout move and then they moved up and did the teleport homers in the center these guys with Trajan ran up these guys over here ran up his assassin was right behind this wall over here uh, and then I scout move behind the building I towed this thing just because he couldn't get a lot of line of shites, his tank was all the way on the other side of the table. And I'm not really afraid of his AP1, you know, I'm gonna get cover, so he's not really afraid of his AP1 shooting from over there. So I scout move up, made that sticky, uh, made this sticky. So that was basically my command phase. That was his turn, super easy turn. 
uh, and then my turn one, we hopped out of our rhino, uh, three inches and then 12, so 15 inches out of the rhino. These guys are all the way up here. I just wanted to get some shots off on this unit over here and then move six inches back into the rhino. Now, when you look at disembarking, it's not completely within, uh, like it, I think it used to be, now it's just within, So or embarking. So if you end within three inches, of the rhino you can embark so the the move here is you basically hop out shoot hop in and then your rhino can then shoot the two side cans you have in in the the list so or, or the squad because it picks two weapons that you have and then the rhino specifically can shoot those two weapons uh as if it was another unit so that's kind of the, the little cheek cheeky thing that we're trying out with this uh this list so with uh all right and then obviously we got these guys out as well um from the rhino these guys i don't plan on being there so these strikes are as far back as they possibly can uh forgetting that they can advance and charge with this shield captain guy or the blade captain which i would suggest playing if you guys ever have these guys i would totally use these guys as much as possible they're freaking insane uh and then these guys ran out to get line of sight onto the sisters over here uh, and i spent one cp so that way they can shoot while advancing so they basically from all the way down here they advanced out 15 plus 6 which is 21 so they bench out 21 inches all the way over there to see the sisters and then they hop back six which they have to be within three of the rhino which is nine inches away uh which is such a huge distance and then they just hop back right into the rhino <laughs> so they got back in they got back in and they got back in so let's get into this so that's kind of what it looked like so they got back in there they got back in there and they got back in there so literally we only have strikes strikes and a bunch of rhinos on the table everything else is off the table uh, these guys came in uh, on this side of the table. I left my assassin back here, which not even thinking I uh, turn one ran up and killed his assassin. So I ran up, shot his assassin with two side cannons uh, within 12 inches. So killed her before he was able to vect. And then he fucking deep struck these guys and killed my assassin before I was able to vect. So just misplay on both sides for assassins because uh, they have an operative, but they should, if they have deep strike on the other side of the table and let's say you go first um as long as they don't like first to fray or something like that that like that you should put them in reserves because her thing still works in reserves or deep strike so same thing with you if you have if you're going first or second make sure that the end of their movement phase you remove her off the table so that way you can teleport her uh you know somewhere else or more safe more safely because we both died <laughs> uh but came down killed that dude got behind me lines uh, so then over here, he, like I said, uh, advanced and made his charge on the strikes and my guy, or he advanced onto the Rhino, killed the Rhino, blew the Rhino up. The guys got out of the Rhino. Uh, and then I still had strikes and the interceptors kind of just chilling, waiting in this little corner over here. Everything else is still where it was. This 10 man brick is basically just camping out on the center objective for the rest of the game. Trade on his boys are just kind of chilling there. So I got Terminators in my backfield, guys camping on the center objective, and a huge squad with a blade captain over here. Now this squad you'll see is going to be there for the rest of the game. Uh, oh, and fucking these guys came back here. So I have two guys in my backfield, uh, them back there, and them back there. They killed the assassin. These guys all killed the uh, rhino, and it's just, I think he killed two of my strikes with this uh, Terminator break in the back. So good part good job on his side we got overwhelming force behind enemy lines so while the secondary mission is active uh enemy units starting the turn range of objective markers destroyed you score with three victory points which is going to be tough because he has <laughs> really hard units to kill and then behind enemy lines uh we have to try and get behind enemy lines on his side of the table so I might have switched it up for aerial denial at the end of your turn if one or more of units from your army are wholly within six inches of the battlefield and no enemy units within six inches of the battlefield. So as long as he's not within three, I should be able to get that because he had these guys within six. So the center of the battlefield is a little point right there. So I'm using my rhino to be within uh, six inches of the battlefield and then within three inches of the center. So that got me some points. And I was like, what do we do about these guys? Probably ignore them. Uh, and then over here, we just wanted to solely focus on killing these three guys and throw everybody at this unit over here. So we had uh, a five-man unit of strikes come down within three inches to steal that objective. 
we had a unit of interceptors hop out up here to try and kill the exaction squad on the side of the thing and take over that that objective we had our uh, drago unit come down over here and then a three-man unit just come up here for behind me lines so i got them behind me lines I got these guys over here trying to charge and get behind me lines in case you know they failed. I just wanted to put my three-man squad over there. And then my uh, Drago and his squad, we're gonna try and go after the Voidsman on this side of the thing and steal this objective. So if we can keep him to a five point uh, on this turn, that'll help out with primary. So we're gonna steal one objective, steal two objective, and steal three objective. He can't get to this objective because I'm gonna try and tie these guys up in combat. So, and then these guys are just too far to do anything over here. All right, so we moved all of our interceptors out over here. Our strikes landed within three inches to steal this objective. Uh, and then they're kind of moving up, shooting, and then charging. And then same thing over here. So they're super fast. Still, in 10th edition, the interceptors hopping out of rhinos. So, but our shooting is not very great going into custodies. This is basically the end of my turn. Uh, we had a 10-man squad charge these three terminators. Uh, we had... Nice. We had a 10-man uh, squad charge these guys, and the strikes kind of chilled because they can't charge out of deep strike. So he's got to kill this rhino in the center, uh, use it kind of as a slingshot, and then we have the interceptors that made their charge over here, and Drago made his charge over here to tag up this vehicle uh, over here. So this is the end of my turn. And then his turn, he killed some guys. I didn't really kill a lot. I killed some dudes over here, but not a ton. He got defend stronghold and tempting target. So he has to control his home field objective and uh, by the end of his turn. And when this secondary mission is drawn, your opponent must select one objective marker in no man's land. At the end of the turn, if you control it, you get it. So. We picked, and this is all the extra stuff I got. So I got a shit ton of assassins. If anybody is in need of assassins, hit me up on Discord. I got a bunch of Codiezes as well. Uh, and then we got our big Lancer Knight that we just got printed. So fucking sick. All right. I think I picked this target, and there was almost no way he was getting this target unless he was able to t take over all 10 of these guys with his custodes over here. So I think he blew up my Rhino by accident by shooting at it and I just didn't roll the best. So my Rhino actually died. So he didn't have anything to charge. <laughs> so he wanted to really charge and potentially consolidate on the objective, but I think it still would have been hard. So he couldn't get that uh, objective in no man's land. And then we were all fighting over here with the tank with Drago and Drago doesn't really do a ton into the tank unless they charge, get lethal hits. And over here, we're just slowly, slowly, slowly attacking each other on this objective, but I kept them off the objective enough to try and tie, because that's 10 points obsec with the strikes, and then a bunch of solo point obsec objects with the uh, interceptors. Down here, we wound up with one guy left, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of my dudes left uh, in the Rhino. So these guys, I think, went back into deep strike uh, down here. So they got moved up here, I think, with the uh, enhancement that they have. And then he's got engage in all fronts and deploy teleport homers. So, uh, or no, that was me. So I got engage in all fronts and deploy teleport homers. So we moved in our exaction squad on this side to have this side. We already have this side up here, which we were able to finish off the tank uh, up here. We had this side with the interceptors and then obviously we had this side. So we had all four table quarters uh, and then deploy teleport homers in no man's land. So I think my three man squad that was back here uh, just kind of backed up and did uh, deploy teleport homers. So that was clutch. And then over here, we just have more fucking intercept. Oh, this is a strike squad. So the strike squad got picked up, picked back down, deployed teleport homers. And then the 10 man interceptor squad that was all night rhino or objected moved up here to try and help out clear off these guys down here. So this squad is surviving 720 plus 135 points of Grey Knights. It's almost 900 points of Grey Knights. This one squad is just tanking, which goes to show that we definitely need something or they need to get a little bit toned down. Uh, and then let's go into the next slide. This is basically the picture I wanted to show everybody. It's got 20 dudes with some strikes all in one combat with three dudes 
and a shield or four dudes and a shield captain. So the biggest thing that he saw was AP one weapons into Grey Knights is not that good because we have a one CP strat to make it AP zero. Uh, so he wasn't able to kill a ton throughout the whole game. He's using axes. He's definitely going to change it up to, to blades. So that way blades are AP two, two damage compared to AP one, three damage. So <clears throat> this guy has two wounds left down here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's literally just a slug fest on this side of the table. These guys in the center, he got assassination and aerial denial. So he's going to try and kill Drago. I told him about the one CP strat to target a character, which he, that's basically what he's trying to do is try and target uh, Drago and try and kill Drago because Drago's not as tanky as he was in ninth edition. And these guys are slowly moving off this objective. He could spend one CP to make this objective sticky and then move off it, but we forgot. Uh, and he slowly again keeps moving this way to get into action. I think he should have just literally kept running this way um, to get closer, but he killed that Rhino the one turn, and this turn he just needs to keep literally running to get into the uh, objective or into the game, essentially. So down here we finally killed off that last guy in our table quarter. We have the Rhino and these four guys left. Then up here we finally finished off. There's only the Blade Captain left, but we got the Strikes and then kind of one unit of interceptor left on this side of the table. And then we have our three-man strike squad in the back holding strong. We have our exactor squad in the back uh, corner over here. And then we still have some paladins or some terminators uh, in combat with these custodes up here. All right. So all he has left really is this ten or this brick with Trajan and these four terminators up here, which are just slowly munching away at my terminators. So this was one of my roles. I think this was trying to wound uh, with the Terminators up there. And no, no, I think that was my save roll. <laughs> so I think I had like a three up save and I rolled a one, 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 two, 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 which killed like three or four of the fucking Terminators up here. So this is my Drago model. I, fought, I forgot mine at home, but Drago's living on one wound left. Uh, up at the corner here. So we picked up and dropped our strikes down within three inches to steal this objective from him again because I'm trying to keep him away from primary. We got bring it down, no prisoners, which just, I really don't have anything to do. I just have to kill shit. So uh, extend battle lines and investigate signals. I got investigate signals and extend battle lines. He had bring it down and no prisoners. So he's trying to kill Drago, which he does. Um, these guys got picked up and brought back down. His action squad is doing their job for 35 points. And everybody else kind of spreading out. So we're, now we're running away from this uh, big ass blob unit over here because this thing is sticky, that thing is sticky, and this thing is sticky. So we literally have three sticky objectives. And if there's nothing for him to charge, he can't, he can't get onto the objective. So. <laughs> we're basically now playing the game of running away from the custodies and this is the final score so at the end of the game really it came down to slowly picking off one unit at a time uh and mainly stealing objectives uh and focus on getting secondaries that's really the point of gray knights in 10th edition and this is the final score we got behind me lines or this is jack so jack got 10, 5, 5, 15. So remember, you get 10 max on primary, and then at the end of the game, you get 15 for each objective that you control. Behind enemy lines, or first turn, you got three points. Second turn, you got five. Third turn, you got zero. Fourth, you got five. And last turn, you got two for uh, no prisoners. So max, he got 35 for primary, and then he got 15 for secondary. So he finished up with 35, 45, 50, 60 points uh, for custodes. And then for us, we had five for the first turn. 10 10 10 and then 15 again on the last turn so we wound up with 50 for primary we got five points turn one uh we got for assassinate because we killed the uh <laughs> the uh assassin with our fucking 18 inch or 12 inch movement 15 inch movement out of a rhino uh and then shooting the assassin within 12 inches and then turn two we got eight turn three we got 10 turn four we got five and then turn <laughs> five we got eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, really, 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 uh, really good. So 40, 50, 100 points. So we got 100 points for primary 
and 60 points for Custodes. So 160. That was basically the wrap up of the game. All right, Jack, just finished the game. What do you think about, this is your second time running Custodes? Yeah, very different results. Okay, um, so what, what did you like about your uh, Custodes? Uh, I actually really enjoy playing them in this edition. I think they're very, very fun and they, good they now. They fixed a lot of things I complained about in the last edition. I mm. thought last edition they were too lopsided. Mm. And they were too dependent on strats and things like that. Now the strats are good and effective. And honestly, I think it balances out the overswings they have. Mm -hmm. So there was terrible shooting-ish. Mm -hmm. um, I made a bunch of mistakes and I paid very dearly for it. What were some of the mistakes? Uh, number one, I moved the assassin in the terrain. I should have left her behind or pulled her off the table. Yep. Um, when I turned one, when I moved the witches up and the squad of custodial guard, I could have left the witches back, spread them out, to at least try and act like I was defending this side of the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the customs could have done the secondary, which they did. Yep. Um, next thing I thought about is way after the game is that. The custodial guard that you see there, I could have spent the CP, made that sticky, and then just walked off with it. Instead, I camped out in the area, protecting an objective that I didn't need to protect. Yeah, and we were saying just keep, keep moving towards like this, or deploy them over there so that way he can take over those two almost the whole game, and then kind of fight for this when he needs to. Because the objectives, there's three on this side of the table, and only one in the center and one over there. So it's, it's comparing two objectives to three objectives with custodians. So custodians want to just take over as many objectives as possible. Two. I would say one, because this is just kind of in the center. Yeah, like, if, I, if I'm sitting on that, cool, but if you're sitting on three, it's 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 a huge difference. Also, what did you notice, especially, like, you didn't know we had two up saves, right? No. That, that was one thing. My first game against Grey Knights in this edition, um, I know a lot of people were down on them. Um, I wouldn't say they're fantastic, but the two up saves definitely help, especially when most of my weapons were AP1 because I was playing axes like a fool. Um, so, we know, so we learned that spears are bad. Really better, but I, uh, I'm not hacking models. <laughs> He's got to buy all new models. I'm going to buy not all new models, but enough models to make a decent list. Of them. Got it. But uh, yeah, uh, Grey Knights are a lot more, f I want to say, flexible. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think they have the manpower to take down some of the bigger, tougher models. Mm -hmm. um, we had the Wardens and the Blade Champion just chewing up squads and you said the points that you were dumping into a 430 or 535 point unit was a lot more than what I was defending. It was close to 900, a little bit over 900. And that was most of the game. And it took five turns to kill that unit. Yeah. So the, the minus one to hit every single turn was amazing. Uh, and the minus one to wound which didn't really matter in combat because I'm saying six. Shooting it, shooting it did, yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was a big difference. I did like the interceptors. Uh, I always forgot that they moved six inches, but they were stuck in combat almost the entire game. Like this, this these four men were stuck over here. Twenty of them were stuck over there. <laughs> it took till turn five to finally finally finish off that unit, and then come within three in the back corner to do the uh, secondary. But sticky objectives helped out so much this game. Look, we got sticky objective, sticky objective, sticky objective, and all the other guys are in the corners doing uh, the mission. Yeah. Plus the exaction squad. I also said the uh, tank should have walked on from reserves oh, yeah. to try and get what like at least shots on whatever he wanted to get off. Because with Games Workshop terrain, there's almost there's a lot of hiding. Yeah, I didn't have any, I, I shot it one time mm, in Literally, combat. In combat, <laughs> I think he killed two two or three guys, but yeah, didn't make his points up. Cool. Anything else you would change? Uh, like we said, next game I'll bring the tank in from reserve or drop it out for some more infantry. Cool. I, think, yeah, I still think the infantry point for point are better than the tanks. Yeah. Awesome. Appreciate the game, Jack. Thank you. So we always record at the end of the game to kind of give our insight on what we could have done better, what we liked, what we didn't like. But leave in the comment below what you guys like about this. Uh, are these battle reports good to kind of see what we're doing with the game? Uh, and little thing that, you know, you want to see happen uh, in the future battle reports. But enjoy the, the end of this kind of review and then also we are updating everything on patreon posting videos first on patreon and then uh youtube a couple days later so if you guys want first access to these videos and tactics head over to the patreon if you guys want to order some merch head over to the discord uh and we'll see you in another video soon